Hi everybody, welcome to the Congregation Families Christmas Eve Communion Service. Uh, I just want to say, number one, Merry Christmas, everybody. Uh, man, it is so nice that it is Christmas. Christmas is my favorite holiday, and it is tomorrow. Uh, and so tonight we're going to do something really, really special. Uh, it's all about communion. It's all about diving into the presence of God. Uh, and we're all at home. Uh, today. Uh, community service is going to be something super, super special uh, tonight. Uh, and before we get into it, I would love to just tell you a little bit about it, uh, what we're going to do and what we're going to do tomorrow. Um, so one of the things we wanted to do, of course, tonight was communion, to spend time as the family of God together, uh, pressing into the presence of God. Uh, someone recently asked me uh, why we call the Congregation Church the Congregation Family. And I said, well, the reason why we call it a family is because it is a family. And it's not just our family. It's the family of God. It's about being a person of God. And when you say yes to faith and you say yes to Jesus, what you're also saying yes to is to being a part of God's family. And there's nothing better than the communion table. There's nothing better than the banquet table to represent that and to show that. Uh, you know, when Jesus traveled around in his ministry, he traveled for three years and he traveled all over um, the area in ancient uh, Mesopotamia. And when he would travel to all these different towns uh, around Judea and Samaria, um, and when he went into Jerusalem, uh, he would go to a new town and he would proclaim that God was finally doing what he promised in the book of Isaiah. Jesus would proclaim uh, that God was finally restoring and renewing and healing creation. All the things that the prophets had said in the Old Testament now were coming true. And they were coming true in and through him. And so he would go to a new town and the disciples would be there and they would explain and announce the kingdom of God. They would announce that Jesus was the Messiah and that through him all things were being made new. And then every night after they would end with what they called a love feast. And it would usually be this huge banquet. Uh, and you've heard about it in the New Testament because there's all these stories in the New Testament where people used to get angry about who was invited to that banquet. Uh, because when Jesus came into a town, he invited everybody. It didn't matter who you were. It didn't matter where you lived. It didn't matter what you had done. Uh, when Jesus is present, there is always room for you at the table. And that incredible idea of a banquet table, uh, the Lord's table, made its way into Christianity. And so for the earliest believers in the first century, when they first met, you got to remember that Christianity was not an illegal religion for 300 years, the first 300 years in the Roman Empire, which meant that if you were an early member of the early church, uh, you were not going to a church uh, like in a building, you weren't going to a church in a theater, you were probably going to a church in a home. And when they would meet, they would gather together and they would share a meal, they, they would break bread, and they would take communion. And they believed that when they took communion, that God was not only present, but they believed, they believed that Jesus was really with them. And so that's what we do. That's why communion is so important. Uh, it not only is a, an extension of our faith, it's not only us saying, hey, we believe in Jesus, we believe what Jesus has done for us and through his life, death, and resurrection, but we also believe that when we come together and take communion as a body of Christ, something incredible happens, and that is that the presence of God comes down to us, and we actually commune with God himself. Amen? So tonight's going to be amazing. Um, Pastor Page is leading communion uh, tonight. It's going to be an amazing thing. Rebecca has some incredible worship music for us. Uh, so I just want to let you guys know that tonight is a night of you and God. Tonight is a night of us and God all coming together. And Christmas is about celebrating the fact that God sent his son Jesus to earth. And what that event of Jesus being born on earth means, not only means for your life and my life, but what it means for all 
the world. Amen. So get excited. Um, enjoy our incredible service tonight. Uh, it's going to kick off with Rebecca uh, doing some incredible worship music. And then do not forget tomorrow morning at 10 a.m., join us for a special Christmas story uh, Christmas story message. It's going to be at 10 a.m. and then it's going to replay every hour on the hour for the rest of the day. Um, God bless you. Have an incredible Christmas. Thank you for joining us tonight. Um, it's going to be great. Rebecca? Hi, congregation family. Welcome to my home. Uh, I'm excited, as always, to worship with you and celebrate this season and the birth of our Lord, Jesus Christ. Oh, holy night, the stars are brightly shining. It is the night of our dear Savior's birth. Long lay the world in sin and error.
but they were led by faith just like we are led by faith. So sing this with me. Brandon, we partnered with some amazing people. First, it was the Little World Shakers, Miss Abby, Brandon, shout out to you guys, and then the family strong, Felicia, myself. But hey, it was a whole team effort to rally around and make this all possible. And we can't forget a huge shout out to Omar and Lily Martinez for helping make kids' Christmas come true this year. just finished our first ever toy drive 2020 in the middle of a pandemic. What an amazing drive through 
toy giveaway. Congregation family being a blessing in the middle of a pandemic, reaching out to the community and kids and families in need. Our hearts are full. We are super thankful for people who partnered with us, Lil Lillian Omar Martinez, and other people who gave financially and who also partnered with us in prayer. Yeah. Because of you guys that we were able to pull this off today and with all the amazing volunteers. Woo! Woo! Brandon, any closing words? I just have to say, one kid, I said, hey, did you did, did you expect this? He said, yeah! <laughs> that says it all. And that sums up our 2020 toy drive. Success. Yes. Woo! Tonight we have a special Christmas Eve service followed by communion with Pastor Paige. I am honored to share with you about the Prince of Peace. That's right. We're talking about Jesus and the unspeakable joy that he brings. You know, this year, if we pick any moment, we might find obstacles. We might find trials that we all faced. The whole world was facing the same trials. At the same time, we shifted. We shifted. We went from meeting in person to just enjoying all of you online. And so now, something happened. And a lot like in our lives, something happens, then something greater happens. And then it begins to build momentum. So as we shift, there was an occurrence that took place causing the walls to feel like they were closing in. I know a lot of you may have felt at times the walls closing in. It was like an earthquake hit your life. You feel the quaking, the trembling, and maybe even the aftermath of picking up the pieces. Through it all, something was arising. Something was arising. Something was arising in you. Something was arising around you. Something might have been arising in your family, but something definitely was arising. Something might have even been emerging for some of you and maybe it hasn't been so noticeable. It's been faint, hard to hear. Not so clear, it was hard to see. Becoming present, there was a peace within your spirit. Through it all, it was a peace that transcended your understanding. That was the Prince of Peace. And then you caught a break as our senior pastor, Tim, likes to talk about. You caught a break. And then now that followed into a breakthrough. And you just felt that emerging as you just took one step. That faith was growing. That faith the size of a mustard seed that moves mountains. It happened. It happened to me. I remember in my undergraduate program, I was playing basketball and it was one weekend. The coach called me to his office and the campus was closed. And he said, you know what? Uh, if you want to get some shots up, I got to do some work around the office and then I'm going to take off. I'm going to lock the doors behind you and then just make sure you don't let anybody in. I said, no problem. The coach was trusting in me. And so I started working on my shots. I, I, I had to shoot about close to 500 or 1,000 shots that day. And so I was keeping count of the shots that I was shooting. And then the doors opened. About an hour went past. And so I figured coach was probably gone already. And then the door opened. 
And it was somebody I didn't recognize. It looked like a student. And I remembered earlier that day when I was walking to the coach's office, my grandmother called, as she likes to do. And she was checking on me and she said, when is the last time that you read your Bible? And I said, oh, grandma. Started looking down even though I was talking and she couldn't see me. And I said, it probably has been about, about two weeks now, grandma. She didn't get on me. She said, you know what? Just make sure you read your word. Make sure you read the Bible. The Bible is good. The Bible is good. I said, okay, grandma. And then we hung up shortly thereafter. And so then I'm in there and I'm shooting in the gym and this person walks in and he said, can I shoot with you? And so I said, you know what? I would love for you to shoot with me. You know, he said, I can rebound for you. I said, I, I would love that. It would definitely make all the shots I have to shoot go by so much faster. I said, but my coach, you know, he let me in the gym and it's closed and the campus is closed and I'm not supposed to let anybody in here. And I never thought to ask him, how did he get in there? And so he turned and he started to walk away and go through the same double doors that were supposed to be locked. And he turned around and he said, do you know God? And I, I said, excuse me? He said, yeah, do you know God? I said, I said yeah, yeah, I, I know God. And right there at that moment, he said, good. Just make sure you read his word. It's good. Make sure you read your Bible. The Bible's good. And I couldn't believe it. I, I thought I wasn't, at least I hoped, that it wasn't noticeable that my eyes were like popping out of my head because I was shocked he said the same message that my grandmother had said. It was just her and I talking and nobody around. So there was no way for him to even know that. And to this day, this was years ago, and to this day I'll never forget that was a breakthrough. That was a breakthrough. When I tell you as soon as I got off that court, I ran home and I got into my word, and to this day, I never go two weeks without, without at least getting into that word. Sometimes it doesn't even have to take that long, and I'm in the word because of that one moment. I just felt peace when he said that. I felt my grandmother's presence when he said that. And at times I think about that day and I don't try to figure out how he got into the gym, but I'm just reminded the message. And that is to stay close to Jesus Christ, to read my word because it's good. And it brings me joy. So nothing could have birthed what was taking place with my human hands. Nothing could have birthed that. That God kind of strength that I feel when I get into his word, when I get into his presence. Only God can do it. Only he can do it. And it builds your faith. That's what it did for me. It built my faith. And in a moment's time, that built my momentum. My momentum. And so Jesus Christ is the master builder. He's entered the world, making you aware of a foundation that has already been laid. That we cannot help but celebrate him as we think about Christmas. Jesus is the eternal celebrity. And so we celebrate him. He brings good tidings and unspeakable joy. Speaking of joy... We are now going to take communion with Pastor Paige. Merry Christmas. And now it's time to come to the table of communion. And like what they said is every one of you is invited. Everyone has a seat at the table. Jesus invites all of us. Communion literally means sharing. Koinonia, koinonia, partnership, participation. Now it's time for us to participate this Christmas Eve we come together as the Congregation Church and those that are welcome, those that are guests.
Communion uses two elements. The first one is the bread. It is a symbol of the body of Jesus Christ. The wine is a symbol of the blood, the sacrificial lamb. And actually, when we come to the table, it is an act of worship. We open our hearts. We ask the Spirit of God to come. And we remember what Jesus, the redemption power of Jesus and what he has given us. It's breaking of the bread together as we worship Jesus and remember his sacrifice at the cross. His redemption power is for all of us to have. And it has set us free. It has set us free from sin and death. And we come to the table together with a heart of thanksgiving and a heart of gratitude. Gratitude changes everything. When you come to the table, especially those, so many of us have had such a tough year, but we're leaving out of this year strong. Why? Because of the redemption power of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I love that word repentance because repentance is really a gift from God. Repentance is that we can make a change in our life through the power of the Spirit. And we can receive the mercy, the loving kindness, and the grace, and the forgiveness of the Lord Jesus Christ. So get your elements ready, and we're going to start off with the bread. And in Luke 22, 19 and 20, I want to read the scripture to you. So as I have put the bread in my hand, I want you to join me. Get the bread together with your family and your friends. And the scriptures read like this. He took the bread and he gave thanks and he broke it. And he gave to them. He gave to all of his disciples. And he says, this is my body, which has been given to you. Do this in remembrance of me. Well, we know Jesus is, was crucified and he's alive today. And he is within us and his presence is real. So we actually stand in the presence of Jesus and we take the element of bread together. Father, we just thank you. We thank you for our salvation. We thank you for forgiveness. We thank you for healing. Because your bread, by your stripes, we are healed. We thank you for the redemption power that is in us. And we remember you and we do it in the presence of you. Let's take the bread together. Likewise, he took the wine. He took the wine and he said this. Likewise, he also took the cup after supper saying this cup is a new covenant of my blood which is shed for you blood is always associated with the power over sin and death so no longer do we have to be a slave to sin no longer do we have to be ashamed no longer do we need to walk in guilt but we walk in justification of righteousness through the blood of jesus God has set us free and we rejoice today. And when we go into 2021, we're going to walk in 2021 by faith and we're going to walk with the power of the blood of Jesus. It is the blood of Jesus that breaks every yoke. So let's take together. Again, thank you, Jesus, for the communion. Thank you for Kononia. Thank you for all the relationships that we have had this last year. We thank you for your deliverance power. We thank you for your healing power. We thank you for our salvation. In the name of Jesus, amen. Thank you, Pastor Paige, and thank you to everyone for tuning in live tonight for our special Christmas Eve communion service, okay? What I want you guys to do now is share, 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 because you care. Be sure to hit the like button, drop us an emoji, leave a comment, let us know what you thought about Brandon's amazing message, okay? And hit the share button because you care. Remember, we wanna reach as many people we can for this special communion service this evening. And also, we've been doing a special year end giving. And you know what, you guys? We just came off our biggest and best Christmas outreach ever in the history of the congregation family. 
we just did over 260 toys. That's right, 260 toys to 260 amazing boys and girls in the local community. Joseph, how did that happen? That happened because of you, because you partnered with us. You partnered with us in prayer, and you also partnered with us by giving. That outreach on the 19th of December would have never been possible if it wasn't for you. So if you feel led tonight and something is tugging on you, saying, I want to give tonight. I want to step up. I want to step out. And I want to answer the call and help the congregation family as they shift, okay? Not just shift today, not just shift tomorrow, but shift into 2021 and beyond. All the information is going to be below. You can give today. You can give by cash. You can give by push pay. There are tons of different ways you guys can give today. Just know we are thankful for any tithe or offering that comes in as we finish up 2020 strong. And boy, have we been able to make a difference in thousands of people's lives because of your generous tithes and donations. So I encourage you today, I challenge you today, okay, to step up and step out and give with a cheerful heart and know that this is what God has called us to do. So once again, all the information is below. I want to say a special prayer over this special offering, this special year-end giving moment. So join me in prayer. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for an amazing year, Father God. We thank you for 2020, Lord. 2020 may not have been what we thought it was supposed to be, but guess what? You have an amazing way of orchestrating things, Father God, to really get our attention so we can dial in to you. Lord, I pray over every person right now, Father God, who is tuning in, watching live. I pray for everyone who will watch later this evening and even tomorrow on Christmas, Father God. I pray you touch their hearts. I pray you be with their families. We pray for peace. We pray for unity. We pray for reconciliation. We pray for healing, Father God. And most importantly, we pray for health, Lord. Lord, I pray that everyone who gives today will be blessed, Father God that they will have a 2021 like a year that they've never had before, Lord. So we thank you in advance, Lord, that tonight is going to be our biggest offering received, Lord, that we are going to be able to spread the word to thousands and thousands of people online as we enter in to a new year and a new season, Father God. So Lord, we give you all the glory. We give you all the honor, Father God. And Lord, thank you for calling us, the congregation family, for such a time as this to be your hands extended. And we just ask this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you all for giving. All the information is below. Anything you give is greatly appreciated and will go towards impacting God's kingdom. Tomorrow morning is what? Christmas. We have a special Christmas service for you guys live 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. So be sure to tune in. It doesn't stop here. Have fun tonight. Enjoy Christmas Eve. But tomorrow is the reason for the season, the Savior's birth. So Merry Christmas Eve. And we cannot wait to see you all live tomorrow morning for our special Christmas service. So be sure to set your alarm clocks because you're going to go to bed tonight. It's Christmas Eve. So set your alarm clocks to wake up at least around 8, 30, 9 o'clock so you can stay in your jammies. You can get your coffee, watch the congregation family special Christmas service on the big screen. So tune in live tomorrow. We cannot wait to see you all then. Have a blessed and happy Christmas Eve. We'll see you all live tomorrow morning.